So I'm going to skip over the poll and kind of get right into what we're talking about today, which is CBC and CBN. Um, because I, to be honest, I already know that a lot of people don't know hardly anything, especially about CBC. Yeah. Cannab cannabichromine. Yep. Cannabichromine. But I... Um, but I was surprised to learn that it was the third most prevalent phytocannabinoid behind THC and CBD. So, so funny enough, you know, the plant all starts from CBG and then it has three enzymatic pathways that the plant has to make either THCA, CBDA, or CBCA. And so all cannabinoids are derived from those three or some form of allotrope of those. And so CBC, yeah, it's the third, it's the third most common. Yeah. And if you take in a lot of it, it's not uh, intoxicating. And it kind of has this indirect interaction with the endocannabinoid system, but really system two, right? When we talk about, you know, the, the central nervous system being the, the first system, and then we have the second system, where does CBC really interact? So... The CBC is probably the least understood out of the major cannabinoids. Um, and I'm going to classify the major as CBG, THC, CBD, and CBC. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably the least understood, but the most interesting indication for CBC is anti-convulsion. And so even the derivatives that come from CBC, like a degradation product of... Um, um, CB, uh, uh, THC is CBN, CBC will degrade, mm -hmm, which we're CBN. talking about next. Yeah. So CBC degrades into CBL. CBL also has anticonvulsant properties. And so when we start thinking about intervention for seizures and so forth, it seems that CBC is our most effective molecule for those outcomes. Tremors, implications for Parkinson's, mm -hmm. certain forms of MS, and so um, CBC is kind of like one of my most um, exciting cannabinoids. Well, and here, you know, your other benefits like the anti-inflammatory, it, we, we talk a lot about it. We did THCV, THCA uh, last, last time. Yeah. And anti-inflammation just seems to be a common, uh, common thing. It, yep. And I don't know whether or not that's just like, you know, it's plant-based and, and most plant-based things are antioxidative and they're, they're going to be anti-inflammatory a little bit. Um, but CBC seems to be antibiotic yep. in a bigger way than a lot of the other cannabinoids um, are, which is interesting for topical applications because it seems like you could put you could put this on, um, and I think that it might be even the next slide here. Uh, yeah, this anti-acne treatment. Yep. Yeah, in fact, right? for I, topicals I did a, and creams. I did formulation for the company that was doing the studies for, uh, yeah, for for the uh, antibiotic properties of CBC. So they're out they're out of Arizona. So. And then there's one that was done in Nevada as well. So anyway, kind of interesting. Yeah, well, so here's the question. Why Why or how does it do that? I mean, if you look at an uh -huh. antibiotic, an antibiotic literally is shutting down most of the ability, the reproductive ability, for example, of you know certain bacteria. I yeah. mean, there's different mechanisms of action and so forth. Yeah, but well, you're why always trying to stop the reproduction of the next bacteria bacteria that's growing, you're either altering some type of, and there's different mechanisms in there, um, right? Different antibiotics right. work in different ways, which is why we, which is why there's different antibiotics for, for different bugs. Um, yeah. Ones that are based on fungals, you know, funguses typically, mm -hmm. you know, um, are toxins to most bacteria. And so, and that actually helps in the degradation and digestion of bacteria for fungus. I mean, there's, there's mm -hmm. all kinds of these things, but here's the interesting one. This is why CBC is like, in my opinion, one of the most cool molecules. So it seems to inhibit energy overproduction in areas like the brain. And so it's regulating acetyl-CoA formation. 
right, which is one of the major energy pathways. And oftentimes for convulsions or, um, you know, epileptic conditions, you're having this brainstorming event. You're having these events where you have an overproduction of energy until the brain has this like massive synaptic firing event that occurs. Yep, you're essentially well, shorting the computer. It, everything comes on at once. And yep. then it dies, and then it and then it shuts off. That's that's essentially what you're talking about with the seizure. That's right. And so CBC seems to inhibit an overproduction of energy within the brain, but it fits into our natural normal feedback loops that that you know the typical or normal person has. The reason why this is significant is because, you know, when we're thinking about you know, even in my case for like my daughter, this is interesting because if we're going to inhibit seizures, it seems like CBC, CBL, and some of these are a better candidate than just say CBD. CBD stops seizures because it railroads the synaptic system. CBC to actually seems to inhibit energy production there. The thing that makes that significant in terms of its antibiotic properties is it's most likely inhibiting energy usage within the bacteria, which is causing it to die or, or not function. Are they using uh, CBC yet in some, some off-label, well, they would be over-the-counter products really. And this is really the question that, that I wanted to ask you, Blake, is do you know of, because I don't know of any products, especially in the Utah market that are high in CBC um, enough to, to, to go out and buy one. We've been looking around for CBC, high products in CBC and are having a hard time finding them. Um, yeah, I mean, the only one I know of, the highest one I know of that has CBC is our one to 10 tincture, design one to 10 mm -hmm. tincture. Um, and, and that's intentional. CBC is a little bit still harder to come by. And so you don't find a lot of isolated CBC products. And plus comparative to like Delta nine, Delta eight, CBG, CBN, a lot of people don't know tons about it. I mean, you're, yeah. you're hitting a very specialized group to do those things, right? Mm -hmm. And so I do see the possibility of that in topicals for, you know, antibiotic properties. But how many people are wanting to necessarily inhibit, you know, energy production in the brain, or at least create a feedback loop that's sustainable there? Uh, you know, it's a limited right. condition. Here's yep. what I would say. Um, you will see more and more people move that direction as we have more studies that are done. Yep, I, I, I agree. And it's good to cover it because it's one of the most common, uh, you know, it's commonly found and yep. it's, we're gonna talk about more and more of these products or these cannabinoids that are uh, lesser known. Okay, so yep. let's get on to CBN because CBN, yep. uh, there's a lot of people who've been consuming flour. There's a lot of people who've been consuming CBN and not really knowing that they're consuming it. CBN is what your question was about. It seems to be able to mimic somatin in your central nervous system, which means it affects anxiety and sleep. So if you're having anxiety, CBN is a really good molecule to have. So what you're saying here is that CBN seems to uh, affect somatin, the somatin pathways, and that's what's happening with the sleep. Yep. And, so, and really, when you look at the, the pathway, you're looking at serotonin and melatonin. Those are the two, and that's why it has anti-anxiety properties as well as sleep properties. So what's, what's crazy about CBN is that it's not really produced in a, in a big way with the plant itself, but it's rather a degradation product, a product of as the, as the plant degrades, the CBN content increases. That's correct. Can you, can you uh, I have always taught patients that if you leave your bag of flour in the car, that, that is not a very good place to keep your flour because as it degrades, old weed is going to make you tired. That's the old wives tale, right? Yep. That's the, and, and it's true to a certain extent because it's converting to CBN. That's correct. That's correct. So yeah, I mean, a CBN, if we were to describe different molecules, CBN is the sleepy one. 
right? It's a sleepy molecule. There's the munchy molecule. There's the sleepy molecule. CBN is the sleepy molecule, right? And so CB nighttime. Yeah, CB nighttime. And, and typically it doesn't initially make you tired, but if you do close your eyes, then you're going down. And, and you'll sleep yep. good throughout the night. So CBN has a lot of cool implications medically, you know, uh, for anxiety, but also sleep help and some of these other things. Um, the challenge with CBN is because it's not naturally produced in large amounts from the plant, it is, it is a degradation product. You either need to start aging your weed to get it in massive amounts, or people in the laboratories go ahead and synthesize it. And it can be synthesized synthetically, or you can take existing cannabinoids and you can put them down a path to make CBN. Um, and so, you know, I hear a lot of people who lately Delta 8's been a big deal and people are talking about, you know, they're nervous by these, you know, chemical interventions. Well, technically you should probably lump CBN in that same concern bracket because one of the ways that people make CBN is using catalytic bridges like iodine. And so one of the ways that you can notice if your, I, if your CBN has been intervened with iodine is often it'll have this sort of red or pink tint to it. Um, and so how do you get all your iodine out? Well, I can tell you as a chemist, that's not easy. And so a lot of your CBN product that people are making is probably not healthy for you, especially for inhalation. Um, yeah. So yeah. I really like CBN and CBN is one of the things that we can tell patients to increase when they are using high THC doses, yes. because not only can you add CBD to your, um, to your products or choose products with high CBD to THC ratios, but if you choose products with CBN in them, then you can get that, you can, you can really tweak that medical use of cannabis, decreasing anxiety specifically and improving sleep, like entry to sleep or falling asleep. You can improve that and you can yep. improve sleep quality with CBN, CBD and THC. And this is where I get really excited because now I can talk about CBN as something that's like practically useful. Whereas yes. we were talking about CBC and CBC, while it might be practically useful, I don't have a lot of options for products and I, we don't know enough about it. CBN seems like we definitely know enough, right? We don't know everything about CBN, but we certainly know enough to know that it's going to help you fall asleep. It's going to help you stay asleep. It tends to reduce anxiety associated yep. with high THC even or anxiety in general. And now it's totally useful for the patient. That's right. And That's this, right. so, I mean, so now I'm okay. Yeah. I'm animating up because CBN is such a useful, it's a useful compound. So yeah, CBN is I, extremely useful. So I like, uh, I like to take people who use flour and, um, and also when, oh, and ha ha ha. I'm going to bring up your ABV again, right? Your favorite <laughs> thing, like, so when you can use ABV, already been vaped uh, flour, yep. and it is higher in CBN. It is. It is much higher right? in CBN. Because, because it's been degraded by the process of inhalation or by the process of already been uh, heated up. And heated and oxygen in, intake. So when, when, you've, when you've inhaled it or burned it or vaporized it, you're moving oxygen through. Remember, the three things that kind of degrade cannabinoids are heat, light, and oxygen. So, so just a very, um, CBN is a very powerful piece of the puzzle. And I think it should be part of every cannabis consumer's arsenal, right? Yep. If, if you have multiple products in your in your uh, cabinet, one of them should have higher amounts of CBN because you can use that, right? You can use that for anxiety. You can use that for for sleep. It's great. Yeah, that's right. I do not recommend using it as an antibiotic. Uh, you know, we just don't know enough. But that that doesn't mean it's not useful. Here's yep. some CBN studies. Um, I like the idea of these clinical trials in other countries. 
Yep. Uh, right, the CBN cream to treat epidermal lysis. Um, what's, man, we're trying to, goes to show you how much, how broad the, uh, the science is. Like yeah. when, they're, when they're doing studies on these, these rare skin diseases, um, things like that, things, just, it's interesting. Yeah, so like in this, that particular case, CBN is effective because, so the, uh, the basically the lysis or the breaking of skin cells is, is happening as a result of a stress signal that's being sent that tells the cells to multiply, but it does it in a, not a normal or what we would consider a typical way that your body sends those signals. So every day your skin's replacing itself. And that's based on mm -hmm. normal genetics. That's normal signaling that occurs. And in some of these disease cases, what happens is you almost have this stress response of like, you are permanently injured. You need to keep repairing as quickly as humanly possible. And that's a, right. that's a stressor reaction that happens. And so CBN, if you're downregulating anxiety, seems to have an effect for certain disease states that are, or disease states that are uh, pushing certain types of, you know, either endolysis or some of these other things. So. Sure. Yeah. Cool. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip right over the questions, go right back to this. Uh, you know, if you're watching this, remember to, to subscribe to discover marijuana on YouTube. And the best way to reach out to Blake and I is to ask a question on any one of our videos because we look at all of the comments, we, we basically try to answer every question. And you can, you can meet us every couple of weeks. Um, and hell, we can, even do a, um, we can even do a webinar for a topic that you choose. So yeah, uh, absolutely. thanks, Blake, for Lunch and Learn. You're welcome. And have uh, yeah, have a good one. See you later.